Hello everyone, Alvaro Perez here, back with another tutorial video on how to design for KDP. Today I'll be working in Photoshop. Thank you guys for joining me. I wanted to take a second to thank everybody who's gone and joined my KDP design group on Facebook. It's been live for three days now, and I think we have something like 150 members. So if you have not joined that group yet, please do so. Uh, it's a great group of people. I'm going to leave a link in the description. So let me talk a little bit about some of the differences between Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. I've done quite a few videos on Illustrator so far, and you guys have seen that Illustrator is based on objects. You create objects, you select those objects, and you work on those objects. Photoshop is a little bit different. You're working with pixels. So for a lot of the work you do, you're going to have to select which pixels you're going to be working with. So Photoshop comes with a lot of different selection tools. In the future, I think I'm going to do a video where I go into detail on how to use each of those tools. For today, I want to talk about the selection modes. That's four modes that you can work in using any of your selection tools. So when you go and do your research on Amazon, you're going to find a whole lot of books that look exactly the same. And that's because anybody can just create a rectangle in Photoshop, go to their paint bucket tool, and fill it with white. Okay, pretty simple, pretty plain. Now you're going to want to stand out a little bit. So today we're going to be creating some custom shapes. They're still simple, but they're custom. Now we're making these badges in this tutorial, but I want everyone to realize that the tools I'm about to show you are good for a whole lot more than just that. So think about how you can incorporate these tools into the rest of your workflow. So now that I have a rectangular selection, I can come up here to the Select menu, click on Transform Selection. Now I can drag these handles to change the size of this selection. Now there's something that just happened in the latest update of Photoshop. And I mean just happened like I found out about this two days ago. It used to be that if you drag the handle, you would have to hold Shift if you wanted the rectangle to stay in proportion. Now it stays in proportion by default. And if you want to change the proportions, now you have to hold shift down to do so. Personally, I think that this change is a lot better. It's a lot more intuitive to work this way. The problem is for those of us who have been using Photoshop for a long time, it's gonna take a long time to get used to this change. If I click back on my rectangular marquee tool, you see the four tiles on the top that I am talking about. The first one is to create a new selection, which is what I'm on right now. So I have one rectangle selected, if I come up here and create another one, you'll see that the first one disappears. So every time I click and drag, I get a new selection. That's usually the only mode that people use. But if you come up here and click on the tile next to it, that is add to a selection. So you'll notice I have my rectangle down here. If I create another rectangle, you'll see how my selection grows. So now if I click on my paint bucket tool and fill it, you'll see the shape that comes out. Okay. Next to that is the subtract from selection tile. So if I create my rectangle now, you'll see how it detracts from the selection. Okay, and so you can see that. I'll switch to black and I'll fill it in. That's now the shape and size of my selection. Okay, so let me undo that. And finally, we have the intersect with selection tool. So if I create a selection now with my rectangular marquee, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to switch to my elliptical marquee tool. And as I create this selection, you'll see that the only part that remains afterward is wherever these two selections intersected with each other. And you'll see that when I fill it in with my paint bucket tool. Okay, so you can use any combination of those tiles to keep changing your selection. So I'm going to go to Control D to select None. And I'm actually going to trash this layer and start again. So New Layer. And I'm going to start with my Rectangle tool again. And remember, if I want to move this around while I'm creating the selection, all I have to do is hold the space bar down, and I can move it into place. About right there. I'm actually going to go to Transform Selection, and I'm going to hold Shift down to change the proportions, and I'm going to drag this a little bit tall. Now I will click up here and start making my elliptical selection. And move it down into place, and I think that's good about right there. So I'm going to let go. And you'll see that because I had the intersect with selection uh, chosen, my selection exists only where my two selections were overlapping with each other. Now I'm going to click and drag a rectangle into place. And that looks good about there. Now when I come up here to my paint bucket tool and fill it, you can see the custom shape that we have made. So the next step is I'm going to go into my layers panel and I'm going to right click on layer one, go to my blending options. And the first thing I want to do is create a stroke. You guys know what a stroke is from the videos on Illustrator. So now you'll see that it created a stroke within the boundaries of my marquee. Make sure to highlight stroke so you can change the parameters over here. And you'll see that you can change the width of that stroke. I'll leave it say about right there. You have the option to position your stroke on the inside of your selection, the outside of your selection, or along the center line of your selection. I'm going to leave mine on the inside and I'll show you why. 
If I click on outside, I have nice tight corners on the inside of my selection. But on the outside, I have this kind of awkward looking radius around my corners. If I switch to inside, you see that the opposite happens. The nice tight corners stay on the outside and you get this curve with this radius on the corners on the inside, which looks a little better to me. So I'm going to leave it like that. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to click on Bevel and Emboss. And you'll see what it already did based on the parameters that I had selected. And of course you can come in and change the parameters for this as well, but I'm going to leave them where they're at. Now I'm going to create some lines inside of that badge. So I'm going to click Control D, which is deselect. I'm going to come over to my Type tool. I'm going to click anywhere inside that badge. Now the first thing I notice is that the color is set to white for my type, and that's not going to work, so I'm going to switch to black. Hit OK. And I'm going to type in that line. If I select my move tool, I can use the arrow keys to move it into place. If I hold shift down while I'm moving it, I can move it perfectly vertically without changing it horizontally. And now I can hold shift and alt and not only will it move perfectly vertically, but I can also make a copy of it. You see those pink guides it's giving me? That's useful because if I do the same thing again and make a third copy, it actually tells you when they're all spaced out perfectly. So there you have it, a custom badge for our composition notebook. Thank you guys for watching.